Jack Leslie, The Lion Who Never Roared John Francis Leslie, or Jack as he was known, was born on the 17th of August 1901 in Canning Town, London. His father, John Leslie, was a boilermaker and his mother, Annie, was a seamstress. From an early age he showed great sporting ability in cricket, swimming and football whilst attending Hermit Road School. After leaving school at the age of 14, he joined his father at Beckton Gasworks as a boilermaker's apprentice. During the First World War, London was a target for the German Zeppelin bombing raids, especially the industrialised areas where Jack lived and worked. At the end of the First World War, football was making a comeback, and in 1919, Jack signed for Barking Town as an amateur. Barking were a successful team, and an 18-year-old Jack impressed in a team whose average age was 24. After only two months at Barking, he was chosen to represent the London Leagues on a Paris tour arranged by Jules Rimet, the founder of the World Cup. He played several more times in France as a member of the Essex County team. He was signed in 1921 by Plymouth Argyle as a professional footballer in the newly formed Division 3 South. At the time, there was a maximum wage for footballers, regardless of which division they played in, of £8 a week during the season and £6 during the summer. At the time, he was the only black professional footballer in England. He had fulfilled a dream to become a professional footballer. Throughout his life, he was subjected to racism. This also followed him on the football pitch, where he received chants and taunts from opposition fans and players and sometimes even his own fans. Only the top team in the division were promoted, and in the next six seasons, Argyle finished second. It was during this time in 1924 that Plymouth Argyle went on a tour of South America. During the tour, they beat Argentina and Uruguay, with Jack scoring in the win against Uruguay. 1925 was a notable year for Jack. He got married on the 27th of June to win who he met while living in London in his teens. They moved to a house on Glendower Road, Plymouth. Things were looking good. In September 1925, the FA International Selection Committee asked members of the FA Council to put forward names of players for consideration for selection for the England team. On the 6th of October 1925, Jack was called into the office of Bob Jack, the Plymouth Argyle manager who told him, I've got great news for you, you've been picked for England. What a feeling that must have been for a young man who had now reached the pinnacle of his career, playing for his country. The newspapers of the time printed the team selection when it was released by the FA to the Press Association. In one report, he is referred to as Leslie, a man of colour. After his retirement, Jack said of his selection, Everybody in the club knew about it. The town was full of it. All them days ago, it was quite a thing for a little club like Plymouth to have a man called up for England. I was proud, but then I was proud just to be a paid footballer. But his joy was to be short-lived. Two weeks later, on Monday the 19th of October, the team was printed in Athletic News. No mention of Jack Leslie. He wasn't injured or suspended. So why had he suddenly disappeared from the team? The FA denied he was ever selected, and minutes of the meeting never mentioned Jack, yet they issued a press release with, the, with his name as travelling reserve. Speculation as to why he had been omitted from the team announced on the 19th of October was never fully reported. When asked about this after his retirement, he said, I didn't ask outright. I could see by their faces it was awkward, but I did hear round about like that the FA had come to have another look at me. Not at me football, but at me face. They asked and found they'd made a ricket. Found out about me daddy, and that was it. There was a bit of an uproar in the papers. Folks in the town were very upset. No one ever told me official-like, but that had to be the reason. Me mum was English, but me daddy was black as the ace of spades. There wasn't any other reason for taking my cap away. Undaunted by this incident, he put all his energy into being the best at what he did. 
This seemed to pay dividends when, on 10th of March 1928, Jack Leslie made history as the first black player to captain a football league team. Argyle eventually won promotion to Division 2 in 1930, and Jack was a major part of that and was made club captain. In 1932, they finished fourth in the second division, which is the highest position the club has ever achieved. In 1933, he suffered a freak injury when the lace from the ball came loose, and as he headed the ball, the lace scraped his eye. After many weeks out of the game, he made a comeback, but only played one more game. He retired in 1934, having played 400 games and scoring 137 goals, making him the fourth highest goal scorer in the club's history. After his enforced retirement, he ran the Swan Hotel in Truro. But Jack wasn't a businessman and his wife persuaded him to return to London. They did so in 1938. He went back to his trade as a boilermaker and also took on the role of trainer at his old club back in town. Yet again, Jack lived through another world war where London was a major target for German bombs. After the war, he was employed by Plymouth Argyle as a scout, attending matches to find talent for his new old club. In 1967, at the age of 66, Jack returned to football, cleaning the boots of World Cup winners Jeff Hurst, Martin Peters and Bobby Moore at West Ham United. In 1978, when Viv Anderson became the first black player to play for England, the story of Jack Leslie found prominence again, only to slide back into obscurity soon after. He stayed at West Ham cleaning the boots of players such as Frank Lampard Sr., Billy Bonds and Sir Trevor Brooking for 15 years until his retirement in 1982. Jack died on the 25th of November 1988. His death certificate shows him not as an ex-professional footballer, but rather a retired boilermaker. On November the 24th, 2021, a blue plaque was unveiled on the site of his childhood home, and on October the 10th, 2022, a statue of Jack was unveiled outside Plymouth Argyle Stadium, Home Park. On the 27th of March, 2023, the FA presented an honorary England cap to the granddaughters of Jack Leslie. The FA said the retraction of his selection should never have happened, and that in 1925, Jack Leslie earned a deserved call-up to represent England. However, he faced adversity because of the colour of his skin and was deselected and never played for his country. They also said that the cap would recognise his career, contribution to our game and wider society and to right this historical wrong. Jack Leslie is, quite rightly, a hero to Plymouth Argyle fans. A consistent player for more than a decade, he would have been in the running for selection in many more games, but Jack was never spoken of in connection to the national team again. According to the Football Herald in 1930, Jack was known throughout England for his skill and complexion, while the Daily Mail called him a coloured genius in 1932, and the following year wrote, had he been white, he would have been a certain England international. The national press said it, and he said it. Jack Leslie should have been the first black footballer to play for England. If you want to find more out about Jack Leslie, visit the website jacklesley.co.uk or read the biography.